what is up? This is David from BasicHomeRecordingStudio.com. Hope you're enjoying the site. If you came onto this video from somewhere else, welcome. It makes no difference to me how you got here. I'm glad that you're here. We're going to be talking, of course, today about the Scarlett 2i2 audio interface from Focusrite. All right, so jumping right into it here, the first thing you will notice is that it is pretty small. I'll give you an idea for the scale. Here's a CD. That gives you an idea of the scale. It also is mostly for me to have this really sweet reflection thing going on here. Uh, that's enough. But it's great. It's portable. It's small. It's something you can fit in a laptop bag uh, if you have to be exiled from your own apartment because your neighbors are sick and tired of your 2 a.m. recording sessions, you could always take it to a friend's house, plug it in there, get their neighbors mad at them. Or if you keep it at your place, it's always great because it doesn't take up a whole lot of desk space. But it's got a very slick, clean look overall. The brushed aluminum is very cool. The color is very cool. Uh, the controls feel really nice. The All the controls here on the front have some weight to them. You don't have any wiggle. Uh, over the full range of travel. It's nice. Uh, these guys down here can't say the same for they are a little bit flimsy, but yeah, it's kind of a nitpick. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to have it in one position or the other. So the ones that really matter are smooth and overall just a nice look. So looking a little bit more closely at what we got going on on the front, you see we have two mic preamps here that take a combo input. So what does that mean? That means we can use either a XLR cable, that's for your direct box output or primarily your mic output, or the tried and true quarter inch instrument cable, in this case TS. This will be from your keyboard, this could be from your guitar effects pedal or your guitar uh, directly. So this is great because you can have some flexibility on how you set up your inputs. Obviously, if you had just one or the other, you'd be a little bit more limited. So it's nice to have that flexibility. And when you plug in the XLR input, it automatically detects it and puts it in mic level signal mode so that you don't have to worry. If you're using the quarter inch cable, you're going to have to select which signal strength you're going to be inputting. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, moving on, we have 48 volt phantom power here. That is essential if you're going to be using a condenser mic. I, I feel like phantom power is misunderstood sometimes. It's you know it's not an actual phantom coming screaming out of the unit. You know it's not a ghost or anything like that. So you don't need to be scared of it. But what it it's simply it is simply to power the condenser microphone, and as a result, you're going to want to have this capability on any audio interface that you that you choose. So I'm glad we could uh, clear that up with some of you out there. Moving across, we'll finish it up here. We have the output of the left and right main outputs control here with the monitor label and that controls, I'll show you in the back in a minute, and then the headphones here. So that's the equivalent control for the headphone level. You can switch this direct monitoring on and off and I'll also talk about that in a minute. So everything's, I'm just pushing everything, pushing everything to the back. I'm gonna keep you guys watching this whole review. Uh, some lights here on the front. We have the USB light. What that just basically means is that you're connected, it's powered on, it's ready to rock and roll. And then you can't see them right now, it's not turned on, but the lights here behind each gain control actually have uh, some lights that, that light up behind them around the ring here. You can see where I'm pointing. They light up green for a signal present and red for when the signal is clipping. So quick side note, I am actually colorblind and two red and green and like one in 10 of you guys watching this uh, right now. So this really, this feature isn't much use to me, but luckily you can always use your recording software to also set your levels, which is what I recommend because in the end, the software is the truth and if it thinks you're clipping, than you are. It's kind of like your girlfriend. Like, it, Regardless of whether or not you're actually in trouble, if she thinks you're in trouble or you should be in trouble, you're in trouble. So just keep that in mind. You can always use the software meter to adjust your levels for your inputs. Or for those of you who can see colors, 
you know, just continue to enjoy that, I guess. So that wraps up the front. Let's spin this guy around. And yeah, there's not a whole lot going on back here. We have USB 2.0 port right here and then the line outputs left and right. Those correspond to the control that I mentioned on the front side, the monitor control. So you could hook something else up here, but really this is for your, your monitors, your studio monitors if you choose to, to have those. So that's pretty much it for the for the basic functionality. Now let's talk a little bit about these a uh, few of the unique features. Uh, one of them is this line instrument level selector on the preamps. So you know I was playing with this a little bit. The the instrument level setting actually is pretty hot, and if you you know hot as in a high signal level, not like hot as in like this is a sweet feature. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it is a it's a cool idea to try to give people the option to plug directly in with their instrument. What I found is that it's just it just doesn't really work out. It's it ends up being even on the lowest gain setting, it's still pretty high signal level. So you know, what I recommend is what I always recommend, not for this interface, but for any interface, get a direct box. These things cost like thirty to forty dollars. It's something that you're gonna use a hundred times and you'll be glad you have it. You don't have to buy one that costs, you know, $250. Here's the one I use. You can see it's a little bit banged up. You can see it's a little bit uh, used up, but it works great. There's not much going on in these things. They're real simple. So regardless of the fact that this has the line level and instrument level selector, I still recommend, as always, using the direct box. Uh, the other big feature was this direct monitoring function. You know, same kind of thing. I mean, it's all right. You, you can reduce the latency of your of your recording, and what does that mean? Latency is the time that it takes for the signal to kind of do its round trip through your computer and back through the headphones or your monitor, so you can hear what it sounds like. And this is really only a problem when you're trying to record, say, with a a guitar amp effect, a virtual amp, or maybe uh, some reverb or something. Because you're, what you're going to do is you're going to hear yourself the the dry signal and then a split second later you're going to hear the process signal so you put it on this direct monitoring mode and you feel real good about yourself because now it goes straight through but the problem is if you do have any of those effects now you can't hear them uh, so that's no good so a lot of times i mean that kind of really affects your performance you think you're going to have this sweet overdrive marshall combo british crunch sound and, and it and it's not it's the standard it's just your unamplified kind of acoustic version of an unplugged electric guitar and that's not really going to do it so it's a good idea it's kind of nice I guess if you're doing something acoustic it could be cool overall I think it's just one of those things it's nice but are you going to use it I mean I personally wouldn't but it's it's available for you and that's pretty much it as far as the special features obviously this is a real bare bones kind of device but you know at a $150 price point I mean, I'm pretty impressed with it the included software is Ableton Live Lite version 8. It's also pretty bare bones, but I mean, if you're just getting started in this hobby, it's an excellent way to get your feet wet. Uh, I went through the little tutorial on there. It's pretty easy to get set up. Now, I have a lot of experience with my own recording software that I use, which is uh, Sonar, but you know, they're all about the same. You know, the, the inter interface is pretty, pretty intuitive. The tutorial was really good, and I was able to record something right away. So keep that in mind. I mean, it's the full package. I mean, you have everything you need here to get going. 150 bucks. you're not going to do much better than that. And uh, the one thing I was really impressed with was, like, the quality of the controls and the overall kind of – the overall package is pretty attractive. So, I mean, I definitely recommend it. Give it a look. And in general, if you have any questions about the terms we've been using or audio interfaces in general, check out the website basichomerecordingstudio.com and get your questions answered there. Send me a note, send me an email, send me a Facebook note. I mean, lots of different ways. If you have something that you really want to see reviewed, give me a, you know, give me a shout and I'll make that happen. So uh, thanks for listening. Otherwise, it's just me talking to myself in my room, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. But at least you're hearing it now, so it's a little bit better.